I don't want to rub salt in the wood, obviously, but like I, I genuinely believe in the Dino effect. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in it uh, just because what it does is it just relieves pressure, defensive pressure, especially from the surrounding guys. And I think we're kind of seeing the effects of that in both cities, in both LA and Montreal, where it allows Anze Kopitar to be free more offensively because what was behind Anze Kopitar before Philip Deneau in recent years, not a lot. Andreas Athanasiu. Gabe Velarde. Jeff Carter. Young guys. Velarde was always hurt. So so it's either young guys or really old guys. Right. And it's like not, none of them were especially defensive, defensively, sound the way Dino is. And I think bringing Dino in, not only does it help Kopitar, but it helps the guys below him because it just allows Dino to take all the five on five de- defensive pressure, which is what he did in Montreal. And, and I think I, I'm not, I don't want to downplay the skill of the guys in Montreal, but I think there is a, they need to kind of figure it out. I would say the best way to put it is they, no. need, to, they need to adjust. They what? Need, they well, need they to haven't have adjusted. A, well, they haven't won. They need to adjust. No, no, but I, I can't wait, the, by the way, for Bergevin to go to LA next year and say, yeah, Phil Deneau's worth the money. That son of a bitch. Oh, no, sir. Go on. I'm not just, that they need I've been to, so mad all of, day about this. Of course they need to adjust. Uh, or th- they need to adjust without him. And the thing was, they had this. They had the time to, or the coaching team system team had the time to do this. They knew Philip Deneau was not going to be there, and they it's still like this. It's on both the players. In my opinion, it's on both the players and the coaches to figure this out. Obviously, it was the most obvious for me. Where, yeah, you. You take a big hit to your center depth. The Christian Devorak trade was really good. But then it just went back to that same thing where, all right, how we fill this gap? Ryan Paling. You know, we've tried this again. We've tried it before. Let's try to do something with him. And then I think it's just what Montreal needs to do is a lot of the guys that they had there that had the potential to take on bigger roles, the guys that have have tried to do something with their minutes, just you just haven't seen that oomph yet from them. Well, you've seen some oomph. It's just been downwards. Um, it's kind of been like when you take a souffle out the oven, you're like, wow, this is great. But then somebody closes a door too loud and it just sinks to the bottom. I think I once described on this podcast watching Montreal's power play. It's kind of like watching a balloon deflate because it's like, oh, I've got this big balloon. I'm so excited. It just slowly goes. And it's just it's sad by the end of it. You're disappointed. It's like eating um, McDonald's. What? It's like eating McDonald's. Wait. Yeah, it's like it, the you first feel, good, the first yeah. bite is good, but the more you go, it's just like I don't it's know like, what I've done. <laughs> like, did I? By the I, end of it, it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Did, did I actually feel my hunger? <laughs> yes, and it's just, but you just know you're gonna regret it in the morning. Exactly. Cause you're just gonna look at yourself in the mirror. You're gonna be like, I could have just made a salad, but <laughs> I wanted nuggets anyway. So the Habs are 0-4. Yeah. They had a strong start against the Leafs. Uh, ultimately did not come on top of that. They had a stinker of a game against the Buffalo Sabres. Played a pretty good game to the Rangers, but sort of had some defensive breakdowns, couldn't score in any of the three games, but it was probably their best game of the season. Um, and then they go home again. They play San Jose, and once again, they just lay an egg as a compliment. I don't know how to describe just how poor those games were, but remember how I told you guys I haven't felt like it's a new season, it's just a continuation of last year? Mm -hmm. You can't imagine when I look at the season, I realize there's 78 games left of this. And just the pain that it feels. So right now, the Habs have the worst power play in the league. Do you guys know what percentage is it? It is. Five. Uh, it's like five. 
Zero. Oh yeah. Uh, that was the obvious. Answer. They have not scored a power play goal. <laughs> They're what? Oh, and twelve. I think I saw. Now that I think you it's say 0 it. thirteen. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, and thirteen. Oops. Has it been Jake Allen in net the whole like for all? Four no, games? Montembeau was there for Buffalo. Okay. So um, Allen has not been the problem. Allen's been good. It's just you know, just look around him. So their power, sure, their their PK is fourth worst in the league. It's around fifty eight percent. Okay. I'm not going to repeat everything I yelled about last episode because it's just annoying. But Mark Bergerman spoke today all of a sudden. Wanted to see everyone, apparently. No reason else, but he spoke. Wasn't um, that weird to you? Like, he just, no, in, you're de- no. 0 and 4, and now you're going to so come it was, out? It wasn't weird that he showed up. I wasn't. When I saw it, I was surprised. I'm like, yeah, I understand that. But it was more when he's like, yeah, I'm just here because I wanted to see everyone. I was kind of like, yeah, sure, okay. Um, the big two, well, there's three kind of things here. First off, no panic moves are coming. Yeah, I get that. That's actually, let's be honest. If Montreal, are, like, if this continues, like, let's just be honest here. If Bergevin leaves and this team is in the state it's in, it's not the worst state, like Buffalo. Like, there are young players there. There are guys locked up. It's not the worst thing. So I I wouldn't make a panic move. Um, there was the fact that for some reason, despite the team not winning, he was asked about his contract, said in the perfect world, I'd love to be in Montreal. Perfect world, I would have lied to see Andre Markov retire a half instead of going to the KHL, but we're, we'll ignore that, won't we, Burge? 990. 990 games. 990 games, Burge. And he says that him and Ducharme solve problems with the team in training camp. Now, we can't excuse the way the players are playing. Um, we can't um, ignore the fact that Jonathan Druin is the only forward to have scored a goal. Um, but I don't think we can either ignore the fact that if they saw those problems, that in a month, they could not sort them out. That is on everyone. It just, there is literally nothing going right in the, in the, in the city of Montreal right now. There is nothing positive to speak of except for Jonathan Druitt. That yeah. is, I like, like, how do you, what do you do? And, and, and there's, I don't know, like you signed the guy to a three year, the coach to a three year extension, despite, yes, I get, he brought you to the Stanley cup final. Yeah. But he he Adam, couldn't get rid of him. He couldn't, but I, but I know, but Adam Wilde said it, they played their best hockey, not under Dominic Ducharme last uh, in the playoffs. They played their best hockey without the, their head current head coach. Okay, I want to double check that because Adam seems to hate that guy. What I remember, he was gone for some of the Vegas series. Was Dom gone for all of Winnipeg? I need to double check. This. It was for a few of them, right? Like, yeah, it was Luke Richardson, was, right? Yeah, I just I can't remember exactly when Richardson left because I want to be fair to Dom here, even though I kind of hate that it took him this long to separate Sherrod and Weber. But like, I. I like, let's be honest here. Like, you guys know I'm not a fan of Dom Ducharme. But mm-hmm. I just, I just, I want to be fair to him because I don't think we're going to be very positive about Dominic Ducharme for a lot of this season. But, like, sure. let's not forget that the way they started playing in that Leaf series was under him. And Correct. again, you sweep and then you beat Vegas in six. Let's not forget, like, Dom Ducharme may not have been on the bench. But he was talking to the team constantly. That's all I want to say. But then here's the problem: is would if like they said they fired Richardson? I doubt it's going to happen, unfortunately. So they they fired Ducharme. No. You know okay. why? It doesn't matter how well they played under Richardson, because he's not going to get the job. No. Because he doesn't yeah, speak French. I know. I know. I know. I know. Like was it that, just um, it doesn't. Well, yeah, matter. Randy Cunnyworth. I remember that. Yeah, it was it was Molson saying it was the worst mistake ever made. Was Cuddy worth being coach because he wasn't? Remember, they had to apologize because Kirk Muller was coach for the bubble for like three games. Oh yeah, discussion we'll have <laughs> for another day. But I'm pretty sure we've had the discuss. Whatever. It. I. All I can think not, of right now yeah, is go ahead. just restructure the lines and just like I mean, you're at a point now where just look for combinations that work. That um, going back yeah. and forth with everything and just try it. Alex, go ahead because I'm just gonna quickly find because um they did shuffle some lines at a uh, practice. Say I'm gonna go get okay. them up. I thought I had them, but I closed them by accident. 
like obviously you can't, you're not going to fire the guy you just signed a three year extension to. Like that's kind of out of the question. God, I wish they would though. The first opportunity I can really see him being fired, like just because we're talking about it, I don't want him to be fired, is at the end of the season if Mark Bergman does not resign because they're going to bring in a new guy. And if he starts the season poorly, Ducharme, someone else is coming in. Like that's just how GMs are. Like we've seen it, we've seen it time and time again. We've seen it in Toronto. The only place in recent memory that it really hasn't happened is in Pittsburgh. And they did like, it's still Mike Sullivan. Like that's the only recent example I can think of. I think it's, he has the championship pedigree though. Like right. he came like, in a, and just won two rings right away. Right. There's a different, there's a bit of a difference there. It's just, I'm watching them play and I'm reading what people are saying. And it's just baffling to me that we're really in this situation. You know who's one example, actually, Alex? Who? That of a coach that no matter how poorly they were doing, they kept him on for as long as they could. Michelle Terrian? Uh Lindy Ruff in Buffalo. Because he was there even when they were getting really bad. Sure. When did they fire him? Um... Cause just thinking, it's like like Lindsey Ruff might have been like the last like like seriously tendered coach in Buffalo, right? Because then it just became a a carousel of both coaches and GMs, right? Uh, um, in f- 2013, February of 2013. That is ridiculous to think, and just thinking of everyone who's come through since. Anyway, so these are the lines at Habs practice today. Obviously, Allen and then Matinbo, Matinbo behind them, Kulak, Petrie, nice. Sherratt, Weidman, Romanov, Savard, Sami Niku is the seventh defenseman. Um, the f- uh, extra forwards were Pat Cat and Adam Brooks. The fourth line was Evans, Armia, Lekkonen. The third line was Perot, Caulfield, Toffoli. Second line is Stuart Drew and Anderson, to- um, Drew and Anderson, Dvorak. First line Suzuki, Hoffman, Gallagher. It's weird. That's a but it, like their changes. It's really funny. It's kind of when you think about it. Remember um, when Dom Ducharme was was first kind of brought in as coach, and there was that end of the season where he couldn't go like two games without changing his lines, yeah. and it took him to this point. Like you got to think now that like the Habs sort of PR right now is kind of it's this weird thing that now it's like this public back and forth, but it's kind of like it's not it's not a coincidence. Obviously, that the the season started off so poorly. Rumors about Bergman going to LA start. Rumors about Waugh talking to Molson start. And then all of this is coming to a head when they play Carolina. And yes, Barry Cockney comes back to town. They have to win that game, right? Like, do you guys see the attendance in, at the Bell Center for the game against San Jose? It was 16,000. Around there, I yeah. Saw, yeah. Reminder that the capacity for the Bell Center is 21,000. Yeah. Madame et Monsieur, um, Montreal when the Habs are bad, uh, they just don't go. So I keep forgetting uh, they, um, the capacity or so because I've been watching a lot of baseball lately. Yep. And then their capacity is like oh thirty seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I always forget. I'm like oh my gosh, sixteen thousand out of thirty seven thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's what is it like? It's like the Bell Center and the United Center are like the two ones that are like twenty one, twenty ish thousand. I and think, I think so. I think most other arenas are like 17,000, I think. I want to say Winnipeg's maybe even 16, but then the way it's built is it just like the noise just intensifies really, really well there. But um, yeah, so the Montreal Canadiens kind of need to win. Do you know what? I'm actually really curious because you would probably think Montreal needs to add another centerman. And I was thinking, like, maybe a guy who's not super flashy but still has a bit of offensive potential you could probably put into a middle six role. Um, I was kind of thinking, like, is Dylan Strome not a decent bet? Like, think about that, right? It's bet. a, it's yeah. a bet is the issue. Is you don't know, you don't know what you're getting, and this would be the second time around where it's well, we need a, he needs to change his scenery. That's, that's the if I'm Montreal and I want to make the playoffs, I think it would be a good bet to make. But I don't know if it's the bet Montreal should make because it's a bet. I think Montreal needs a sure thing. Is mm-hmm. would be what I is what I would say. Plus, like to end the season last year, he was not playing center. 
Really? Oh, yeah, because they weren't trusting him anymore. And now ah, they cool. don't want to play him not at center. Awesome. How old is he again? 24? 24 I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Then again, let's let's give him the dowdy treatment. The Blackhawks are bad. 